Year 2250, on the outer edge of our solar system, a crew of 12 astronauts awakens from cryosleep aboard the Starship Venture. They've spent the last 73 years traveling across 4.37 light years of space on a mission humanity once thought impossible to explore the Alpha Centauri star system, completely unaware that what they would find here would change the course of human history forever. This is the story of mankind's first interstellar expedition. It began in year 2177, when Earth was at the brink of collapse. Climate disasters, resource scarcity, and overpopulation had pushed civilizations to the edge. In the middle of this chaos, the United Nations formed the Centauri Initiative, a program to find humanity a second home. Theoretical physicist proposed using an antimatter propulsion drive, a concept previously deemed unfeasible due to cost and instability. But after decades of development, the venture was born, equipped with fusion reactors, AI navigation, and the first stable antimatter engine. In 2179, it launched from Earth, leaving behind a world uncertain of its own survival. The 12 crew members were placed in cryosleep, with their bodies monitored by an AI called Athena, programmed to wake them only upon approach to Alpha Centauri. And now, 73 years later, as their eyes opened to the glow of a new star, they saw it, a planet orbiting Proxima Centauri B, covered with oceans, clouds, and signs of biosignatures. Not just life, complex life, forests, river systems, even strange electromagnetic pulses. Within months, the team built the first extraterrestrial habitat. Drones surveyed the land, samples were taken, and in a twist that would shock Earth, the pulses they detected were not natural. They were signals, structured, repeating, intelligent. For the first time, humans weren't just explorers. They were the ones being observed. Messages were sent back to Earth via quantum entanglement relays, confirming life, habitability, and the presence of unknown intelligence. The habitat module stood firm under the violet skies of Proxima Centauri B, anchored to the rocky plains by magnetic stabilizers. Daily cycles were regulated by Earth standard time, but outside, the planet had its own rhythm, its own seasons, winds, and mysteries. Surveys revealed vast forests of towering, translucent flora, whose leaves shimmered in colors beyond the human spectrum. Water here wasn't just water. It contained microorganisms with cellular structures unlike anything in Earth's biology. And still, the pulses continued, always timed, always directed, always watching. The team deployed signal triangulation arrays across the valley, attempting to decode the repeating frequencies. What they found was unnerving, a language based not on sound, but on shifts in electromagnetic fields, as if the planet itself was communicating through space-time. Each pulse was a sequence, and each sequence was growing more complex. It wasn't just a message, it was a response. The crew had never sent anything out deliberately, and yet something had understood their presence. It had anticipated it. Months passed, robotic drones sent to distant regions vanished without a trace. Sensors picked up unusual thermal signatures in the upper atmosphere, moving in patterns no natural object should follow. Autonomous satellites began receiving backdoor pings from an unknown source. Code, encrypted, too advanced to trace, too alien to interpret. But one thing was clear. Something out there was curious. Caution became policy. Exploration was scaled back. Defensive systems were powered up. Shield arrays, plasma fences, emergency cryo chambers reactivated. No one spoke it aloud, but the feeling was mutual across the entire base. They were not alone. And worse, they were not in control. Then on the 417th planetary sunrise, a change. The pulses stopped. Not a slowdown, not a fade out, just silence. Every sensor fell into stillness. The magnetic field readings flatlined, the skies cleared, the world went quiet. That silence was louder than any noise. And then it came, a projection, a geometric hologram formed in midair above the communication tower, a perfect sphere, rotating with thousands of glyphs shimmering across its surface. Each symbol pulsed with patterns, 
fractals, equations, atomic diagrams, an invitation, a challenge, a test. The crew fed it everything, data, language models, visual cues, and one by one the glyphs began aligning with their meanings. The sphere responded by generating a structure, a three-dimensional map, not of the planet, but of the system. Alpha Centauri A, B, and Proxima. But that wasn't all. There were paths drawn from one world to another, not orbital paths, not travel routes, something else, interference zones, places where space-time warped ever so slightly. The sphere was mapping gateways. Was this how they communicated across stars? Had they traveled using these distortions in space? Were they even bound by time the way humans understood it? A second projection followed, this time a simulation. It showed Earth, not Earth now, but Earth in flames, cities flooded, skies blackened, signals fading. Then, the Earth rebuilt, forests returned, skies cleared, and above it all, a single orbiting structure, an object resembling the glyph-covered sphere. It wasn't just a warning, it was an offer. Coexistence, perhaps, or guidance, but at a cost, to change, to abandon conquest, to evolve beyond consumption, to become something worthy of joining a larger network of intelligences. Back on Earth, panic collided with wonder. Debates exploded across continents, religions fractured, science soared. But one message became clear to everyone. Humanity had reached its next frontier, not in distance, but in understanding. And the question was no longer, are we alone? It was, are we ready to be seen?